I can't just say it, so I'm gonna sing it. That was a lot of applause than I was expecting, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was uh, 2008 that Becky and I visited Redeemer. Um, it was in November, um, early November, and I, I remember this specifically because he did the beeline to us as well, because he did most of the people in this room. And he knew that I was, um, I came, I have a worship leading background. Um, he knew that ahead of time um, before I was there and, and uh, asked me that day to be involved with this, the music ministry. And I hadn't led worship in a church since our, the church that we had been at in Salt Lake, so it had been a few years, and I was really enjoying not being a part of the music team and really being in the congregation, and, and I thought, well, maybe God is calling me to this, and maybe I should pray about this, but maybe immediately is not exactly the right time. Well, I was playing indoor soccer that night, and um, I fell and I broke my two fingers, and so I was sidelined for about probably two or three months. Um, and that did allow me to take the time that was needed. Um, and that just goes to show us that God's plan is not always Steve's plan. <laughs> or should I say the other way around, Steve's plan. Um, but that was 2008. And, um, and in 2010, I had been involved playing music for a few years. And Steve said, yeah, I'd love for you to go through the leadership um, and, uh, and go and, be, and become a member of the diaconate and, uh, and then become the worship leader at, at Redeemer. And I said, well, I can't because we had just had Annabelle. She was brand spanking new. And uh, I was like, yeah, with the baby, it's, you know, time is really tough. And Steve said, Annabelle doesn't know anything about time yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't use that as an excuse. <laughs> So, um, at one point, I think Steve mentioned that um, I had been, uh, at some point, I had been the um, longest running worship leader of Redeemer. I don't know what year that was, and compared, I think, I think he compared me, I was like, I was his George Beverly shade to his Billy Graham. <laughs> It was um, just about a year ago that I recorded this album that everybody knows about in this room. Um, and it was... It was... I, I knew I had talked to Steve about it. I had to say, how can this happen? How can I make this happen? This is a really cool opportunity. And he immediately sat down and he said, let's, let's, let's go grab coffee. Went to Dunkin' Donuts. I remember exactly the table we were sitting at. I'll never forget this conversation because he basically said, um, asked everything, every detail about this. Who are the musicians going to be? Who's producing it? When are you going to go? What are the songs? And he asked me, what are the songs? And then he's like, what order will the songs be in on the record? Um, and uh, and he, he, we just talked through it. And... Um, I'm not sure I would have recorded it without that conversation. I'm not sure the project would have, would have actually occurred. But, um, but wouldn't you know, it's been a year since I've done that. And um, in the last year, I've been, um, well, I've been writing some other new hymns. And so I thought this would be a really good opportunity to, to play a few. Um, I hope that's okay. is wildly out of tune. I need a tune. He's got a tune right there. Okay, I'm sorry. I should have tuned. I stand bay sitting at Dazzle The jazz club I'd love to own Wonder how I could possibly talk Julie into making this our home. <laughs> how marvelous, how wonderful, very few people will understand. 
How marvelous, how wonderful This place is so much better than Disneyland It's a slower one How deep this father's love for Chris Favorite of his children. <laughs> he loves his daughters equally. His son, he is perfect. <laughs> if you like that, you're going to love this one. <laughs> If you didn't like that, you won't like the rest of this. <laughs> Oh, my jam, turn it up till the levels are 
Oh, I can't wait for the day I can let loose and shred. 